Praise the Lord. It's so good to be in the Apostolic Church in Whitesboro and enjoying God's blessings and enjoying His covenant. He is so awesome. God has so much in store for His people. Those that are faithful to Him call upon His name. And the beauty of it all is, is He set this all up for everybody. So even if you're not where you need to be, He loves you. He's got a plan for you. Amen. It's just up to us to yield ourselves to His will. This good book tells us all about it. And if we'll just study that word, make it our life, we will have a better life and a better life to come. Praise God. And we're going to worship Him. So worship with us as we sing and give Him glory. Hallelujah. Lord, you're available. 
your presence. You hear the cry of a feebleest heart, God. And we are rich tonight in your mercy and grace. And God, we're thankful that we know in whom we put our trust. You carry us. You keep us. You will guide us. You will protect us, Lord. And to be in your presence, to be in your house, to be with your people, Lord. Hallelujah. To revel in your word. To rejoice in your goodness, God. We are in a wonderful place of richness and glory. We are thankful for the angels that do minister. Oh, how we are blessed. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Yes. Thank you. 
abilities, God, but we realize we need God. We need Jesus Christ in our lives. We need the healer, the deliverer. We need you, Lord, more than we need anything else, more than life, more than breath, because you are the one who provides life. Hallelujah. And you make our life worth living when we serve you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. Oh, we feel your tender mercies here as you wash over us. Lord, as your anointing ministers in our hearts, God. Lord, there are some needs that are being cast at your feet right now. There are some burdens that are too heavy to be borne. And Lord, we need to lay them at your feet and let you carry those. And we need to live for you. We just need to focus on serving you, God. And when we can do this, Lord, you can deliver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can to set the captives free. Sometimes we have entered into a prison on our own without even realizing it. And Jesus has the keys. And he wants to set you free. He wants to bless. He wants to deliver. And I am so thankful tonight to serve such a loving God. To be in such a wonderful place. Amen. The body of Christ is here to show love to the world around us. We're not here to point out their faults and their failures because we realize we have enough of our own. But we're here to love people unconditionally. Amen. In spite of their mistakes, in spite, in spite of the way they act, because sometimes people don't act real good. Amen. But they still need to be loved. They still need to be prayed for and helped out. Amen. And tonight we're going to go into the word of the Lord. And God's word has a way of setting us free if we'll take it for what it is. Amen. And that's what this is about tonight, is taking God at His Word. We all have heard God's Word, and the Bible talks about believing. And of course, if you believe, what many people don't realize is, if you believe, that means you're going to obey. And there are so many that believe, say they believe, they hear the word, go, oh yeah, oh yeah, but they do not obey the word. And it's absolutely essential that we obey what Jesus said, what the Bible teaches. Amen. Many in the world take God's word for granted. They let God say what he wants to say, and then they go out and do what they want to do. Amen. But there is a place. Hell is going to be hot. And sin is going to leave many there because we have failed to do what God told us to, to stay from that place, to not end up in that predicament. Amen. So taking God at his word, I want to open up the book of Revelations. We're going to go to chapter 22 and verse 13 and stay there in Revelations because we will drop back a chapter and read a verse in a little bit, but I just help you to. Keep your place in your Bibles if you're using your Bible. If you're able to use it, if you're using the overhead, you'll be hopefully right on track. But Revelations 22 and verse 13, John the Revelator finishes up the Word of God making a statement talking about our God. Revelations 22, last page of the book, and verse 13. Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into that city. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. <coughs> I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you, these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus came to give us hope, deliverance, to set us free. But there are many that are going to refuse to take advantage of that. He said, blessed are they that do his commandments, verse 14, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. That's eternal life. But he says outside, that realm, there are going to be many 
and it brings so much grief to the Lord. But he says, without our dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Lying is so easy. Somebody say amen. It is. Amen. Now, lying intentionally is one thing, and then there are times that we say things we don't realize that it's not accurate. We have to go back and correct it. That's fine. And, uh, and that's going to happen to everybody. Uh, I believe that our word needs to be spoken in truth as much as lies within us. There's times that we pass on information and we don't know that information is faulty. God knows that. Amen. But he's talking about people who lie intentionally. And uh, we're going to read one more scripture. Go back one chapter to chapter 21 and verse 8. He makes a statement concerning those that aren't going to make it. Chapter 21 and verse 8. He says, but the fearful, unbelieving, the abominable and murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and somebody say all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. We are in a culture, I've seen our culture making a shift. If you go back 50 years, a man's word was his bond. If he shook hands on it, he would do it. I may have to go back farther than that, but I'm going to say 50 years ago, we were good. Amen. You go back 75 years, and there was contracts were a very rare thing. A man shook hands with you, and whatever he shook hands on, that's it. It just settled it. He, he was going to take honor. That was his word. Today, people feel like if a little white lie makes somebody feel better, then it's okay. Or if I can say a little white lie and shield them from hearing something that will hurt them, that's okay. But the trouble is a lie is a lie. There's not white lies and gray lies and you know black lies, they're just lies. And so as a child of God, do we believe God and his word? He said all liars are gonna find themselves in the lake of fire. And so I'm sharing this tonight, not to bring condemnation on anybody. I'm bringing this so that we can get a wake up and go, wow, you know, I need to think about this. Because I have found in my walk with God, I am evolving, I am growing in my walk with God every day. Things that I thought were okay 20 years ago living for God, I'm like, wow, God, I didn't realize that. And I've had to up my game. And you will too. Because God is constantly refining us. He's purifying us. And he's helping us to better understand his will, his desires. And, and it's not just in lying. It's in loving. Loving is an area that we will grow till we check out and go with, be with Jesus. Because we don't grasp love yet. And yet we're trying to love and we're, we're being loved. And, and yet we're realizing every day that we live how much we... Still got to learn about loving. Amen. Truly loving and caring about others. Taking God's word for granted. And it's easy to do. Um, the problem is we're all going to be held accountable for what we say. The things that we say are kept track of. Uh, we're living in a culture, and we can identify with this. They're starting to put cameras everywhere. They're in cars. They're in buildings. They're on street corners, they're in convenience stores, they're all over the place. Everywhere we go, there's cameras. There's cameras on stoplights, there's cameras on street corners, there's cameras, you know, if cops are carrying them, people got them on their heads, people got them on their on their lapel. There are cameras all over the place. And yet, you know what? People are still stealing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know how I know? Because we're seeing the footage of it. There's people that are taking stuff and they're on camera doing it. It's like, they just take for granted. Oh, I can do this. Oh, it's okay. You know, it's not going to do. But the fact of the matter is, judgment's going to catch up with us. A funny little story, and I don't know if this is, was acted out or if it actually happened in a court scenario, but how we take the legal system for granted. This individual is sitting, and some of you may have seen it. It showed up on my Facebook feed. I think, well, no, it wasn't. It was on a, it was a random video. Anyway, this Prisoner was sitting in a wheelchair in a courtroom next to the judge's bench, 
camera was facing the prisoner sitting in the wheelchair and the judge. Behind the prisoner in the doorway was the bailiff standing back behind him. And the judge is questioning this uh, man in the wheelchair saying, we have, you know, video and, and pictures of you stealing a car. And he says, well, that can't be me because my legs don't work. I haven't been able to walk for years. And the judge says, well, we have pictures of you and, you know, people that saw you do this. And he says, well, I don't know how that's possible because you see my legs don't work. I can't walk. He says, I can't, you know, it can't be me. And, uh, and, and so they go into the, well, while they're doing this, the bailiff behind him is slowly putting on a very scary mask. And he's tucking it in his shirt and getting, getting all set. And the attorney is questioning this man in the wheelchair and asking him where he was and how, he, you know, and all kinds of questions about this. And then finally, as they lead into this, the judge says, you know, that stealing a car is good for 10 years, up to 10 years prison time. But impersonating an illness to try to get out of, you know, stealing and, and lying to the courts is, is a lifetime offense. And he uh, says, well, what's your girlfriend gonna think about that? And so on, and, and he's like, well, I'm telling you, my legs don't work, I can't walk, I can't do this. About that time, the bailiff looks over his shoulder and taps him on the shoulder. That guy turns around and looks up and sees the bailiff, and he lights out of that wheelchair running for his life. <laughs> he took justice for granted. He took the cameras for granted. And then he's got the nerve to say, that, that ain't right. <laughs> Amen. Well, what ain't right is stealing somebody's car and thinking it's all right. And this is funny, but the truth of the matter is, is that everyone in humanity has got God's word. Cameras on every corner. God sees everything. God knows everything you're thinking. And somehow he loves us anyway. That's what, that's why I'm saying we got a ways to go on this love thing, folks. We don't have this figured out. Amen. Because God knows what we're thinking and he still loves us. Because sometimes our thinking is stinking. And he still loves us. Thank you, Jesus. But like this individual, we take God's word for granted. God says, don't do this. God says, do this. And we go through life as if, ah, 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 ah. But the problem is, is when judgment day comes and we stand before the throne, just like this individual, everything's going to be brought to light. It's going to be obvious. And the first thing the judge did when he leaped out of that wheelchair and took off running, smacked the gavel on the bench and said, guilty. Case closed. Amen. And in our lives, we're here and we think we're free and we can do what we want and get away with what we want. But the truth is, we need to find out what God wants. And I can tell you right now, whatever God wants for you is what's best for you. That's what's amazing. Amen. That's what's amazing to me. Everything that God is trying to get us to do or be is what's best for us. Right. And yet we, like a teenager, we're trying so hard to do what we want instead of what we're supposed to. It's just, you know, it's that crazy place in life when you're a teenager and, and it seems like your parents are against you, the world's against you, your teachers are against you, you can't have no fun, you, you know. It seems like, and really, everybody just wants what's best for you. Isn't that crazy? Well, that's the way we are as humans. Everything that God wants for us is what's best for us, but yet we think God don't want me to have no fun. I remember being a teenager and wanting to run away from home. And I lived 45 miles from the nearest town. I had no clue where I was even going to go. <laughs> there was nowhere I could run. But I want, you know, it just, my parents were the worst thing in the world, and, and I want out of there, and I want on my way. And, uh, well, here we are as adults doing the same thing. We're fed up with the world around us. We're fed up with the people around us. We don't like what's going on. But it could be that we're not understanding what God has for us. Because I can tell you, when I began to plug into his will, his word, my life changed drastically. My levels of peace, compassion, and understanding have changed immensely. 
just the last 10 years, my understanding has totally changed mm -hmm. the way I drive in traffic, the way that I, I deal with people is completely different because I look through different eyes now and I'm trying to be what he would be instead of what I would be. Because yes. I want to be judgmental. I want to find fault. Uh, if I'm uncomfortable, I want to blame it on somebody else. There's a lot going on. So people that took God's word for, for, for real, look at Noah. Noah is a good example of somebody who took God at his word. Yes, amen. God said, build an ark. I'm going to flood the world and destroy it. It had never happened. It wasn't even raining. They didn't even have rain. Mm -hmm. And yet God said, I'm going to destroy the world with a flood. Noah said, okay. And went to work. Spent 120 years. Him and his sons building the ark. They got on the ark and then God shut the door. And when God says it, that settles it. Yes. Whether you believe or not. Yes, amen. There was a whole world around them that took God's word for granted. They heard Noah preach. They made fun of Noah. There may have been some people that liked Noah but thought, man, you forget it. Ain't no way I'm going to. I'm having too much fun. I'm going to do what I want to do. And then the rain and the floods came. And they were caught. Just like that inmate in the wheelchair. It was time to pay up. And they were caught short. They did not take God seriously. They didn't take him at his word. But Noah did. And it's an incredible example to us today. If we will obey God, we will be kept in the ark of his safety. And we will be delivered from the flood of judgment and sin that's going to overtake right. this world. God's going to do it. But if we don't, then we're going to be caught up in the flood just like they were. And there's no way you can deny it. There's no way that you can get out of it. There's no way that you can escape it at that point. There are others in the Word of God, though, that give us another example. And that is Samson. Samson is born through prophecy. And Samson is an amazing individual. God has given him superhuman strength. Yes. He is able to defeat the Philistines and do so many wonderful things. And yet, what does he do? He plays with his walk with God. Mm -hmm. Things that God says, don't do it, he does. Amen. And if you've read the story on Samson, you know that eventually a harlot winds up deceiving him into telling his secret the reason his hair was long was because of his vow promised to God to keep it uncut. It was a very special vow, especially since God preferred men to have short hair. Amen. It was a special vow that God put on him. And when she got him to sleep and got his hair cut off, he woke up, thought, ah, it's just like it was before. She said, the Philistines are on you. And he could not defend himself anymore. He lost everything because... He didn't take God serious. He didn't take him at his word. God would have done much greater things through Samson if Samson could have yielded to God and just honored God and his word. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't honor his parents. His parents tried to encourage him to, to get involved with a woman that was of the Jewish faith. Instead, he went after a Philistine that was against the people of God and the word of God and the ways of God. It, you see what I mean? It was messed up. And, and, and the full story, Samson winds up losing his life. His eyes are poked out. He's left grinding meal for corn and made fun of. And finally, at a feast, they bring him out to show him off how the, the Philistines conquered Samson. And he prays one last time and says, God, give me my strength back. Yeah. And push these pillars down that are holding up this huge colonnade all these people are celebrating in. And let, let them die with me. And God grants it. And he pushes the pillars out. The building collapses, kills him and all of the people. And the Bible says more Philistines died in his death than when he was alive. Should have been the other way around. But he didn't take God at his word. He didn't take him serious. Amen. If we'll take God seriously at his word, it's amazing what God will do through us. Amen. Moses is a good example of somebody who took God at his word. Amen. He spared by the mercy of God as a baby when he's supposed to be killed, raised up in Pharaoh's palace and finds himself having to flee. He tries to become a deliverer because he knew there was prophecy of it, but it didn't work. 
And finally, he has to flee out in the desert and stays out there till he's 80. And then God tells him, go back and lead my people out of Egypt. And Moses could have said, I'm too old. I'm not doing it. But he did. He did what God told him to do. And he wound up living to be like 134 years old. He led the children of Israel out of Egypt to the edge of the promised land. And then Joshua took over and God handed the reins to him. But look at how God used him to deliver the children of Israel. When he should have been preparing to die, he began to do the greatest work for God that he could possibly do. And became this close to God. You know why? He took God at his word. He did what God wanted him to do. And we're not all Moses. Somebody say, thank God. <laughs> we're not all Noah. I don't particularly want to have to build a 500 foot long boat. All right. But if God told you to do, to do it, you could. Yes. That's the awesome thing about it. Same thing with Moses. But we are who God called us to be. We are in his body. And Paul says that we're all members in particular. I got news for you. You pull my little fingernail off and my whole body's going to know about it. And so will yours also if you lose a fingernail. Every part of us is important. <laughs> you pluck one hair. And you can bring a tear to your eye. Amen? Yeah. It's important to you. Well, you and I are all part of the body of Christ. We're important. Right. We're vital. We are a part of the whole. And God made it that way. And so we're important to what God is doing. That's why it's so important that my little finger does what I want my little finger to do. My thumb does what I want it to do. My tongue does what I want it to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's vital to my body. Well, so it is to the body of Christ. We've got to do what God wants us to do. He's the head. Okay? He's the one in charge. So therefore, we're the body and we are at his beck and call. We're to do whatever. We carry him wherever he wants to go, if you will. Does he need us? He wants us to be a part of him. Mm -hmm. Now let's get back to the love part again. That's amazing. God, who's been here forever, will always exist, who is greater than anything anyone ever dreamed of being, and he wants us to be a part of him. Wow. Yes. And we have issues. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mention that earlier, but Nobody has to say amen. We have issues. And he wants us to be a part of him. He wants to share the joy and the glory that he has. And allow us to experience. And church, as we get into the New Testament church and God working through us, do you realize that he gave us power to pray for the sick, lay hands on the sick, and they would recover? Do you realize that you can be experiencing what he experienced when he heals people and the joy that they experience, the relief that they experience to be there at that moment and be a part of that. That's what part of being the body of Christ is. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. And that's for the whole body. Okay. But we're talking about taking God at his word. Um, let's go to, let's go to idle words. Uh, Matthew chapter 12. New Testament, Jesus teaches us a little bit that is very powerful. Matthew 12 and verse 34. Matthew 12 and 34. He's talking to <laughs> a generation of vipers. Hmm. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you, listen to this, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Give that a second to soak in. Every idle word. Doesn't matter to anybody who's listening. 
God heard it. It's recorded. Can we take him at his word? Did he really mean that? Is that? Did he just say that? Every idle word we're going to be held accountable for at judgment? That ought to put the fear of God in us. Because what I speak, I'm going to be held accountable for. Amen. And many times we think just because we're in a car, nobody sees us or whatever. It don't count. It does. Amen. And I'm using just speech as a part of this because we can all relate to this. We realize how to control our speech is. James says the tongue is an unruly member of our body and uh, who can tame it? You know, we know the tongue is always getting out of place. And we know it sits in a slippery place. It just, it's always doing things it shouldn't do. And so Jesus is teaching us that we have to get control of that member. But he told us the key to it here. Out of the heart. What do we fill our minds with? What do we fill our heart with? Right. What are we attracted to? That's in our heart. What do we focus on in life? That's in our heart. Do we focus on the good? Do we fill our heart with good? Do we try to seek out and find the good? Or do we seek out all of the evil and all of the corrupt and all the chaos and all the stuff and feast on that? Our culture today is feasting on a lot of corruption. There's a lot of occult. It blows my mind how many movies, books, forms of entertainment are built around the occult and people are going after it wholesale. Yes. They want it. They're filling their heart with the occult. Mm -hmm. Well, the occult is worshiping and serving the devil. And the devil comes with steal, kill, and destroy, which is everything evil and wicked that God hates. And people are filling their minds, their lives, and is it, it's not bad enough that it's adults, it's Harry Potter, it's the children. It's in the cartoons. And so without realizing, we can train our children to be fascinated in evil and to be drawn to evil and fill their minds and their hearts with evil and then wonder why they can't keep control of their tongues. Because the world around them can. The music today. There's music out there that is triple X rated. It blows my mind. Yes. I don't know how music like that can be played out loud. Mm -hmm. And there are people that are just, they, they love it. They just they listen to it. They just, they love it. It's great stuff. But Jesus says, your heart's full of wickedness. Evil's going to come out. But on the other hand, if you fill your heart with good things, and Philippians 4 teaches us what sort of things are good, pure, wholesome, yeah. virtuous, if there's any praise. He says, think on these things. Okay? When we think on those things, when we watch those things, when we listen to those things, our heart gets full of those things. And guess what happens to our tongue? The, the tongue is controlled by the heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, we're talking about our head, our heart, what happens? The mouth, blurb, it speaks. So whatever's in here comes out. If you want to control what's coming out, first of all, you're going to have to give him. Because I can tell you from experience, I was a young Marine. I was 20 years old when I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I had... I was a Marine. I, we were a branch of the Navy. You heard about cursing like a sailor. We took it to the next level. That was our job. We were good at it. And I cursed just like everybody else did. And I tried to tame my tongue. But I finally gave up because most of the women around me, they cussed worse than I did. And they didn't cuss with feeling. They just cussed. It didn't make no sense to me. You know? But that was just the way it was. And so I'm like, oh, what's the use? I give up. I tried. I thought I could control my tongue. I couldn't. But do you know what happened after I got the Holy Ghost? Amen. God, help me tame my tongue. Yes. Amen. The Holy Ghost, God in me, Christ in me, gave me an unction. Because every time I would start to curse, every time I would start to answer a dirty joke, every time I would start to retort, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost would quicken me and I I stumble and I'd say something else to get over it. And within just a day or two, I was I was good. 
But from that point on, I began to fill my heart with good things, with the Word of God, with the songs of God. You wonder why we listen to Christian music. I almost listen to no secular music, a little bit here and there, but I, almost all I listen to is Christian music. Of course, what I get fed at the shop, I can't help that. It's out in the world. Amen. But my mind, my heart, I'm feeding on, I'm feeding on things that are pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, has praise. Hallelujah. And yeah. what's happening is that God fills my heart. So my answers tend to be on the good side rather than on the bad side. This is, and I'm just using myself for an example. This is the same for you. And this is what Jesus taught us. Do we take him at his word, though? Because then you have to ask yourself a question. What have I been watching? What have I been listening to? What have I been saying? <laughs> Amen. Are they connected? Could well be. Amen. And so when we watch what we fill in, and, and we remember this from the beginning of the computer generation, garbage in, garbage out. You put a bunch of bad information in a computer, it don't work. I tried putting a login number in the other day, and I tried and tried and tried and tried, and I kept messing up, and guess what? It wouldn't let me in. It would not let me in until I got it right. Well, garbage in, garbage out. If you keep putting in stuff that's wrong, it's going to keep coming out wrong. It's just the way that it is. Yeah. It's not rocket science in that respect. And God has told us that, but we do we take him at his word? You see what I mean? This is elementary, yet it's profound. The simplest things of life, and yet is the most profound in the outcome. And it is what separates people who love God and his word from people who just, yeah, God's cool, and look where God's cool, and it's just kind of a casual relationship, and yeah, I love him, he's a good guy, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I like saying hallelujah and every once in a while. And I hear people often who live in sin, yet they claim to love God and God's good and live for God's good and all that. But yet they're not filling their life with the things of God. So let me read through this again. O generation of vipers, verse 34. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Wow. If he means what he just said, and those letters are in red, then we should take it as the gospel. It's That's established. Yeah. It's a fact. It's the way it is. Right. And so therefore, I have to really consider what I put in my heart and what I let come out of my mouth. Exactly. Think about it. Because we're going to be judged by our words are what's going to separate us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. That, that young man that I was telling you about before that claimed to be crippled in a wheelchair, his actions, like our words, said, I can't walk. I can't do this. I can't, I, I can't do it. Amen. But when he was scared, his actions proved that he could. Amen. He was denying something he could do. And it's, it's, it's messed up. When we live like the world, but we claim to live for God. And so if we're going to live for God, we should seek the things of God. We should fill our life with the things of God. Amen. Ecclesiastes uh, 10 and 20. We've just got a little ways to go. We'll wrap this up. We need to hurry up. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 20. This is one that I've hid. This is a little, uh, and this was Old Testament, but every idle word, and I just want to throw this in, uh, Solomon writes this. He says, Curse not the king, nor not in thy thought. No, not in thy thought. And curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which wings shall, and that with wings, 
I'm sorry. And that which hath wings shall tell the matter. In other words, don't say it if you don't want them to hear it. Somehow, when we say things about people, just it's got a way of getting to them. Right. So if you don't want them to hear it, don't say it. Amen. That was Solomon's advice. Amen. And if we don't say it, we don't have to worry about hearing it. And we need the Lord, though, to overcome this. That is absolutely beyond a doubt. We have to believe what Jesus said, but as humans, he understands we have a hard time with this. Now, let me say for those of you who say, I'm doomed, I'm going to hell, and I'm never going to be delivered. That's obvious. <laughs> God is a merciful God. And he knows when we wake up in the morning and we take off and we're trying to honor him and please him, he's good with that if we're trying. And he's merciful. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every day, his mercies. Amen. Daily, he loadeth us with his benefits and his blessings. David said, blessed is the man or woman that God does not hold guilty for sin. Because we're going to make mistakes and we're going to fall short living for him. If you're trying to fill your mind with good things, if you're trying to do what pleases God, and you're trying to speak that which honors God, he knows it, he's on your side. Yes. You're covered. He's yes. going to see you through this. Amen. But if you're lying to yourself, and you're filling your mind with all kinds of garbage, and stuff is coming out, and you're like, oh, God, I need your help. <laughs> you're like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We have to do something on our part. We have to honor his word. And God will. That's why... We have baptism in Jesus' name. In the gospel, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, then filling of the Holy Ghost. When we're baptized in Jesus' name, everything we have done up to that point is put under the blood and it's gone. No longer can it be called up to his remembrance. That's the first thing God does is give us a chance to have a clean slate. The next step is our part is to take off walking, trying to honor his word and do what he told us to do. And when we do that, James says we have an advocate with the Father. Yes. If we sin, what do we do? We say, oh, God, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Turn from it mm -hmm. and walk on. You're forgiven. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why we walk in forgiveness and repentance. And God delivers. And so if we sin, we have an advocate. If we make a mistake, if we say things we shouldn't, we can repent, turn from it, yes. don't keep doing it, mm -hmm. and he will forgive us. So we have to overcome. He wants us to overcome. He knows we're going to mess up. Parents, you know your kids are going to mess up. Now, if you've got a perfect kid, you enjoy that. <laughs> you are blessed above all. Yes. Amen. Because there will be another kid to show up that, that won't be perfect. And you go, what in the world? How did I mess up on this one? Well, you didn't mess up. We're just, we're all different. Amen. But we all mess up. We all have struggles. God knows this. And God will see us through. God said it. God settles it, whether you believe it or not. When we stand in the judgment, it doesn't matter what you thought. It doesn't matter what some preacher said. It matters what God said. We have to find out what thus saith the Lord. That's why the scripture says that you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's right. I have to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. That's my job. That's your job. It's a very personal and relevant thing because nobody else can monitor what goes into my eyes, my ears, and what comes into my life. Right. But me and you. And as we grow up in our journey, God's seeing us through. It is incredible. Uh, in closing, taking God at his word. Don't take him for granted. And many times we take him for granted because we don't stop and think about what we taught on the night. So take these things Hide them in your heart. Yes. What this word says is real. Yes, yes. Every liar is going to be judged. Unless they repented and turned it over to the Lord and turned from their lying. There's no justified lying. And that just helps us to understand there's no shades of gray. We just have to be honest with people. I'll close with this little illustration. It's a story that was shared by a preacher. He had been called to the Houston area. Sounds like it was a long time ago. But he had got on the bus to, uh, to go across the city or something. And he noticed when he sat down in his seat that the bus driver gave him 25 cents too much. 
And so he's sitting there on the bus and he's thinking, you know, do I worry about it? And, you know, it's 25 cents, not a big deal. And, uh, and he's thinking, you know, I don't know, you know, so. And finally gets to a stop and it comes time to get off the bus and he gets up there to the, to the door and goes to get off. He says, oh yeah, here, he says, you gave me 25 cents too much. The bus driver says, you're the new preacher, aren't you? He said, yes, sir, I am. And he says, uh, he says, I'll be seeing you at church Sunday. He said, I gave you that extra 25 cents to see what you do with it. <laughs> Amen. It counts. What we say, what we do. Yes. It's a little thing. But I'm telling you, it counts in God's eyes. And when we watch the little things, the big things won't be a threat. Let's stand to our feet. Father, your grace has brought us to a wonderful place as it always does. The word of God has opened our eyes and our understanding. The Holy Ghost has spoken to our hearts. And Lord, there's always room for improvement. There's always room for change and growth. And God, I pray that these words will help us to steer our course in a way that will honor you so that you can bless us, God. We love you and we want to be loved by you, Jesus. And we know that you love us. So thank you for your great love. Thank you for cluing us in. Thank you for revealing your will to us. And I pray that, Lord, we will take you at your word so that you can do a wonderful work in our lives and in the lives of all of those that you will touch around us. And we thank you for that. And the church said, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.